Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to show you how to downgrade or upgrade this Dell XPX 8930. But before that, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe down below and thank you for watching. Now before I begin with this video, I'd really appreciate it if you guys go ahead and hit the like button down below. It really helps to grow the channel and I appreciate it. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification. That way you can stay tuned to my latest videos. All right, so without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, so pretty much in this video, I'm going to show you everything you're ever going to need to know how to upgrade or downgrade this Dell XPX OEM desktop, which in my opinion is a fantastic uh, little computer here with a lot of potential. I'm very happy with this thing. Overall, it's got a lot of capabilities and definitely a keeper in my opinion. Depends, of course, on the price you pay for it. If you overpay for it, then, you know, that's, that's something else. But if you get this at a good price, you know, that's definitely worth it. So, uh, you notice in the video it says upgrade and downgrade this uh, OEM desktop. And I'll explain you why. But first, I'm going to go over the specs of this specific uh, uh, one here as it comes in different versions. So... Uh, this is the 8th generation uh, i7-8700 non-K processor here. Uh, it comes with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM running in dual channel. The speed is 2666 megahertz uh, along with the 512 gigabyte SSD and VME drive and the MSI GTX 1650 and this does have a 460 watt stock power supply which is decent for a lower end card like this but of course if you want to get into something more powerful you definitely need to change the the power power supply that'll be the first thing to do so why would you want to downgrade in my case i want to use this i7-8700 for another build on a aftermarket motherboard and what I did was I downgraded it to an i5-8400 so it clearly works the the changing up the different processors but the main thing to do is is to update your BIOS to the latest one the 2021 version I believe it's like 17.1 or something like that but you'll see it it's very easy to do um, you just pretty much go right right into their website type in your uh, uh, service tag number and one of the first things on the drivers, you could see the update your uh, BIOS. It even says urgent. So it's very important to do that in order for you to, to be able to support all these different uh, processors. So I'm going to go over first of all the different processor it does take. And I was very satisfied and happy with that. So it could go as low as the 8th generation uh, Pentium Gold here, which is the G5400. Uh, this is pretty much going to be the cheapest low-end low processor that you could put in here. And it's pretty much like an older i3, which is two cores and four threads. And this thing you could scoop up nowadays, probably like 60, 70, 80 bucks. And uh, this thing will still run a lot of games. I mean, it'll run any game and still be enjoyable, even though it's just a Pentium Gold. Uh, it really depends on your budget. Like I said, in my case, I went down to an i5-8400 because I didn't want that 6-core. Six, six and I had it laying around for a long time. I got it for really cheap a while back. So there you have it. And, of course, it'll support the 8100 i3. And now the big question is, does it support 9th generation processors? And yes, it does. Yes, it does. Even the ones that you see here, which... Uh, require a discrete graphics card that's right an i3 9100f i5 9400f an i5 9600k and definitely i i7 9700k and one item i'm not too sure about the 9900k but from what i'm understanding it also works but at least these here do work with the updated bios no problem and uh, I'm very excited about that okay so let's talk a, a little bit about more about downgrading here uh, this specific model came with the 512 gigabyte M M.2 NVMe and in my case I'm gonna take that out and use it for another build 
and I could just throw in few options. So one option here, if you could see pretty much the closest thing in the middle here, is just a cheap NVMe M.2 that I picked up on eBay for like 18 bucks. It's a 128 gigabyte Sam uh, Samsung NVMe, only like 18 bucks, 20 bucks with shipping. 128 gigabytes, you could put that in as your main drive for boot and then uh, an additional one terabyte uh, storage. Now these things, the mechanical drives, one terabytes are real cheap. You can scoop them up all day for around 30 bucks. So there you have it. You already have a fast drive to boot, maybe throw a small game on it, an additional one terabyte storage. Uh, and you pull it out basically a really, ex you know, a pretty expensive 512 gigabyte uh, M.2 uh, along with the processor in my case and already planning towards your second build and that's the key here um, you you're doing this so you could have another build and perhaps recover your money you, you you build it towards another build and maybe sell this or vice versa depends uh, or just keep two of them and that's the key that's how you really get into uh, PC gaming, you know, you didn't want to just have blow all your money on one, you know, you, you try to get some of your money back and that, you know, it really depends on you. All right, so next is also you could see you could use a um, SSD drive too over there. I have, that's another option that goes on the bottom. That's a 512 gigabyte one too. Those are pretty cheap nowadays used. Um, okay, next. As you can see, I have a fan there on the on the left side of the SSD drive. That's a 92 millimeter fan. You could actually install that uh, in the front of this case, and I'll show you when we get a closer look to get a, a little bit better airflow going onto your graphics card on your bottom half of the build here. And on the right side, you have a EVGA GTX 1080. Uh, it's really a good card of course they're expensive but just to show you that I did put this in the case and it fits really good and still enough room to put that fan to get a little bit better airflow now of course you're gonna need to upgrade your your power supply and that's over there I, I'm just using this for example it's a Seasonic 620 watt full, fully modular power supply now uh, you could go semi-modular, you don't have to go fully modular. I do recommend semi-modular at least because it's a little bit tight, so you just want to minimize your wiring, uh, and uh, that's really the key. Now, the great thing is it's just a full, easy swap of the power supply, no additional adapters required, and that's a beauty about this thing. So now we're going to take a little bit of closer look, and I'm going to show you a little bit more uh, how where the things could go and how, how things look inside, all right? So stay tuned for that. All right, so now we're gonna take a closer look inside and go over where everything goes. Uh, but before that, I forgot to mention, uh, anytime you're buying these OEM uh, gaming desktops or laptops or whatever, uh, do yourself a favor, make yourself a Windows 10 boot disk. It's for free on Windows Media Creation website or a USB, depends what you like. Uh, this particular PC comes with a DVD drive and this for me, in my case, is the cheapest thing. Uh, these things like cost cents, these DVDs, really makes a difference. Get rid of the bloatware. I get a comments all the time saying, oh, how come your uh, desktop is performing way better than mine? You get a higher FPS. That's because you got to do the clean installation. you got to optimize your PC for gaming to get the best possible results. All right, so let's go over to storage now. So this is going to be your cheapest storage here, 3.5 inch. As I mentioned before, you could get a terabyte, 30 bucks refurbished, 40 bucks brand new all day. That's going to be your best bet if you want to save money. Go two, three, whatever, it depends on your budget. Here on the bottom, we have more base for drives for like something like this, a 2.5 inch SSD drive, 500 gig usually goes around 50, 60 bucks. Not bad at all. Again, depends on your budget. All right, so let's open this part up here. That's it. I already removed the graphics card. That way you could have a better view. Now these bays, you could remove these if you're not gonna use them to get a better airflow. Also, as I mentioned before, the 92 millimeter fan does work. It could fit here. It may not be perfect. So what you do is, 
you would have to remove this front panel right here and then you know just screw it in from the outside might need a little maneuvering if you get at least three out of four perfect more than enough I would recommend maybe a black fan like this one of these more high speed you will probably use a Molex adapter because there's no uh, extra uh, fan headers on the motherboard not a problem you just get a Molex since you are going to be upgrading the power supply okay so next as I mentioned, I will be downgrading this M.2 NVMe 512 gig for my uh, other build. And just put it in this cheap $20 one you can get all day on eBay, NVMe, Samsung. Pretty fast, it'll do the job. Really good combination, saving a lot of money. Here we have two sticks of 8, uh, DDR4, 2666 megahertz. Would not get any faster speed than that. You could add two more eights, make it 32, but there's no point of getting any faster RAM than that because that's pretty much what the motherboard supports. So you save you some money there. As far as the CPU cooler, you're going to keep it. Um, that's going to be your best bet because there's only about an, less than an inch or so clearance between the two, about an inch. Anything higher, you're not going to get any airflow. This thing is going to throttle. So, you know, of course, if you change the processor, you'll clean off the thermal paste, put the new one in kind of get a starting point and you'll know how fresh your, th your thermal paste is and you'll get good temperature especially if you install this fan here and with that fan installed even the GTX 1080 that I tried to put uh, once I put it in here there was still about an inch or so uh, clearance in between so that's a pretty long card it goes up to here uh, of course you're going to need to change the uh, power supply and that's pretty much going to be the last thing I'm going to talk about here um, the power supply the good news is it is a stock OEM type of power supply and any aftermarket one will work. As you can see there's a 4 pin motherboard header and a 24 pin uh, power connection here. So any aftermarket power supply will work. That's the good news. You definitely want to, if you're going to get a better graphics card you want to get rid of this thing. It's only 460 watt and it doesn't seem to be uh, rated. It feels kind of light and I didn't see any rating on it so definitely want to change that and it's very easy uh, you just pop four screws here and this thing comes right off right off let me show you yeah four screws here like any other uh, power supply of, of a PC pop pop it open comes right out now of course I recommend a semi modular at minimum uh, because there's not that much uh, space here and make it neat and of course a black color will be real nice to match with the black case but doesn't matter most power supplies are pretty much black anyway so you don't have to go crazy 500 650 750 whatever your budget is and you, you got yourself a really nice uh, gaming computer here and again if you're downgrading like I'm doing uh, you have yourself already number one M.2 drive number two you got the processor now and then you can start looking forward into building yourself a nice uh, secondary computer look for the motherboard a graphics card a case power supply and you, you're there it's that easy so yeah that's pretty much it if you guys like the video please hit the like button down below share this video hit the subscribe button I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next video so goodbye